Brandon at Pentagon Farm Center. In today's FENT how-to video we're going to do a quick explanation of the armrest controls. The tractor that we're sitting in is a 2018 FENT 927S4, but don't worry because all FENT tractors have a very consistent layout in the cab, if you've got a different series, whether that be a 500, 700, 800, 900 or 1000 series tractor, what I show you here today is nearly identical in all of those models as well. We're going to first touch on the driving functions of the tractor. Anything that's related to driving is an orange colored button or switch. So starting with the multifunction joystick, on the back side there's an activation switch. We need to push and hold that switch each time we activate a function of the joystick. So while I'm holding that activation switch, I'm going to push forward on the joystick and you'll notice the tractor will begin to move forwards. As long as we move the joystick in the direction of travel, the tractor will accelerate. And if we move it opposite of the direction of travel, the tractor will decelerate and eventually come to a full stop if you hold it long enough. To travel in reverse, we do the same but opposite. So push and hold the activation switch, move the joystick in the direction you'd like to travel, and as long as, like I say, you're holding that joystick in the direction of travel, it will accelerate and it will decelerate if you hold the joystick opposite of the travel direction. Again, till coming to a full stop like it has now. The rates at which the tractor accelerates and decelerates are set on the side of the joystick. There's a switch here with four different positions. So if we had it all the way down, like you have now, that's position one. That's the slowest responsiveness of the tractor. If we roll it all the way up, that's the quickest responsiveness. In any of those four modes, one through four, top speed can be reached. It's just a matter of how quickly the tractor will get to top speed. This joystick also has movements to the left and to the right. So if while we are moving, we hold our activation switch and tap the joystick to the left, the tractor will shuttle. We'll do that again to shuttle back into forwards. Now we'll pull back on the joystick to come to a stop. If we held our activation switch and tap the joystick to the right, that would activate cruise control. That brings us to the next two buttons here, C1 and C2. Those are programmable cruise control uh, values. You program them in the Vario terminal. We can see here that Cruise 1 is currently set at 5 kilometers an hour and Cruise 2 is at 12.5 kilometers an hour. So if while we are traveling and if our TMS is activated, if C1 cruise value is called up, it's going to turn orange in the dash here when it's called up. Now I push and hold my activation switch, tap the joystick to the right, it turns green here in the dash. So now cruise one value is reached five kilometers an hour. You can press that C1 button there, would deactivate the cruise, but you'll still maintain your five kilometers an hour until you make an adjustment with the multifunction joystick. Likewise for C2, instead it would have reached 12 and a half kilometers an hour. If neither cruise one or cruise two buttons are called up, and illuminated here and we activate the cruise control the tractor will maintain its current ground speed. Moving on we've got minimum and maximum those are engine RPM values which are also programmed in your Fent Varial Terminal. You'll see that when I press minimum we get a readout in the dash that the minimum speed is reached it's currently programmed at a thousand RPM. Press it again to deactivate it'll return to an idle. If we press the maximum button, it reaches our maximum speed, which is set at 1200 RPM. Again, press that a second time to deactivate the function. To the left of the armrest, we have a scroll wheel. This is our hand throttle. You'll notice that even our foot throttle is orange in color as well. Now moving to the keypad, we've got six orange buttons here. So one and two, those are our ranges. We're currently in range one. That's our field or working range. Our top speed is 30 kilometers an hour. If we press button two, 
tractor will uh, change ranges into transport range. In range two is where we'll reach top speed of 50 kilometers an hour. Below that to the right is TMS. TMS stands for Tractor Management System. What that is, is the tractor has an onboard computer that's constantly monitoring load and it's going to increase or decrease engine throttle as necessary to be most efficient. To the left we have foot pedal mode and I'll show you that next. So you'll notice as soon as I press foot pedal mode that TMS becomes active as well. If we're in foot pedal mode, TMS has to be on. There's no way we cannot turn off TMS if we're in foot pedal mode. So now, rather than driving the tractor with our multifunction joystick, we're going to drive it with our foot pedal. It now no longer acts as a foot throttle, but it works as a ground speed control. So we can choose our direction of travel by using our joystick still, just like we did before, holding the activation switch and pushing forward. Now our forward speed is, or range is selected, but we're not moving until we step on the foot pedal. And then you notice as soon as I step off of the foot pedal, the tractor will come to a stop. Now we can shuttle into reverse doing the same, hold our activation switch, push backwards on the joystick, and now again step on the pedal. If you'd prefer, we can also choose our range of travel forward or reverse on the left side of the steering column. It may be difficult to see here, but there's a stock off the steering wheel here with a small orange toggle switch on the very end. So we can push that forward to choose forward direction, or we can push it backwards to choose reverse direction. The scroll wheel on the right side of the armrest, this is the responsiveness of our foot pedal mode, responsiveness and top speed. Moving on below that, we have ABS button on the left. If you've got a 500 or 700 series tractor, that's just an orange colored button. In either scenario, whether it's this tractor or those tractors, this button will never do anything in North America. That's a European only option. And to the right of that, we have a button to put the tractor in neutral. Moving on, we're gonna to touch on the hydraulic functions of the tractor. Those are all blue colored buttons or switches. On our keypad here, we have a lock for the hydraulics. It's good to lock them in transport mode. That'll prevent accidental activation of the hydraulics uh, while transporting. It will also save fuel by decoupling the hydraulic pump. Down here, we have automatic three-point hitch mode. We're gonna come back to those. Sticking with the more basic hydraulic functions, this tractor has four rear hydraulic valves and two front hydraulic valves. So the four rear valves, numbers one and two, those would be yellow and blue in color. They're activated in standard default mode. They're activated by our cross gate valve here. So valve number one would be yellow. So that's forward and backward on our cross gate valve. If we wanted to put that valve into float, we would push it all the way forward past the detent. Valve number two is blue in color. That's sideways on our cross gate valve. The float for it would be all the way to the right past the detent. Valves number three and four are green and red in color. They're located here on our multifunction joystick. The blue circle buttons next to each of those switches are the floats for those two respective valves. If the tractor had an optional fifth or sixth rear hydraulic in default mode, those would be activated by our fingertip switches here, the brown one and the pink one. This tractor does have two front hydraulics. Those are silver and golden color. They're located in default mode here. Those are the right two fingertip switches. Any of these four fingertip switches, the float is pushed forward past detent. Moving on to our module for our electronically positioned controlled hitches is here. Uh, you'll see the, the blue dials and switches there for three-point hitch. This tractor does have a front three-point hitch. So it has this small rotary wheel here. If your tractor doesn't have a front hitch, it likely does not have that rotary wheel. What that wheel does is it sets the working depth of your front hitch. 
the larger one below it sets the working depth of your rear hitch. Now to activate the hitch to lift or lower them, we've got switches here and here. The one on the left is for the front three-point hitch. The one on the right is for the rear three-point hitch. So to lift your hitch, we would simply lift on the switch. To lower the hitch, we would simply press down on the switch. If in case of an emergency you needed to stop the hitches from moving, uh, between those two switches is a stop button. You can simply press it. Now back to these automatic three-point hitch modes. So um, rather than controlling the tractor's hitches via these two switches, if these buttons are illuminated, now rather than controlling the hitch here, we're going to control it via the go and end buttons on our multifunction joystick. So if the rear hitch is in automatic mode, it's going to uh, lift when we press the large end button and it will lower when we press the large go button. If our front hitch was in automatic mode, it would work on the two smaller go and end switches and same way. If we press go, it would lower the front hitch. If we pressed end, it would lift the front hitch. Moving on to the green colored buttons, they are all traction related. The top two are for front wheel assist. If we press the button on the right, that activates front wheel assist. If we press the button on the left with the A, that puts the front wheel assist in automatic mode. So it would automatically disengage at ground speeds greater than 20 kilometers an hour or a steering angle greater than 25 degrees and automatically re-engage under 20 kilometers an hour or a 25 degree steering angle. If we press the button for a second time, it deactivates our front wheel assist. Below that, we have uh, diff lock buttons, very similar to the front wheel assist. If we press the one on the right, that activates diff lock. If we press the one on the left with the A button, that puts the diff lock in automatic mode. So it's going to automatically disengage at speeds greater than 20 kilometers an hour, but it will not re-engage once the speed is then reduced below 20 kilometers. Um, but the steering angle is fully automatic. So steering angle greater than 12 degrees, it would automatically disengage. And steering angle less than 12 degrees, it would then re-engage. Below that, we've got buttons for our front axle suspension. With the button on the left illuminated, we know our front axle suspension is active. If we press the button on the right, that deactivates our front axle suspension. It doesn't adjust its position, but the travel uh, is limited and it will not move. To reactivate, just press the button on the left. We've also got the option at ground speeds less than two kilometers an hour to put the front axle suspension in a manual mode where we can position it where we'd like. So to do that, we would push and hold the button on the right and the suspension will draw. As soon as I let off the button, the suspension will stop moving. If we wanted to lower it even further, I would press and hold it again it would eventually come to a rest on the bump stops. If I went just a little too far and I want to bring it back up, I'll then, then press the button on the left and the suspension will raise. Similar, as soon as I let off, it stops. Again, that's only available at speeds less than two kilometers an hour. So as soon as I start to travel and my speed is greater than that, you'll notice the front axle suspension lift on its own. Next up, we've got our yellow colored buttons. Those are PTO functions. The top four buttons on our keypad are PTO speed selections. So the layout on this 900 series tractor is 1000, 540 economy, 1000 economy, and zero. The zero PTO speed is a neutral position where we can manually turn the PTO shaft on the tractor just by hand when connecting an implement. This tractor was ordered from the factory with a 1000 1000 E PTO only. So you'll notice when I press the 540 E option, it does not illuminate. If you're pressing a button in your cabinet and it does not light up, then your tractor does not have that PTO speed. Depending on the series tractor though, it may have all four PTO speed options. So to engage the PTO, we'd first choose our speed. So I've got 1000 selected now. And now if we go to our three point hitch control module here, there are two yellow colored buttons there. The one on the left is for this tractor's front PTO. The one on the right is for the rear PTO. So to engage 
that rear PTO, I'm going to press that button once, and while the light is flashing next to it, I'm going to press it again. Simply press the button again to deactivate the PTO. In that mode, the PTO clutch, it's always learning. It's going to engage only at a rate necessary to turn your implement. If uh, the scenario comes about where you need to send full power out your PTO shaft, there is another way to engage the PTO. So to do that, we first choose our speed like we have. Now press the button once while the light's flashing. Rather than a quick press, we're going to push and hold the PTO button and then the PTO turns on with full power. Below the PTO speed selection buttons, we have two more buttons with A's on them. So we have a front PTO automatic mode and we have a rear PTO automatic mode. They're similar to the three point hitch automatic modes in that when our, say our rear three or rear PTO is in automatic mode, it's going to now be controlled rather than on this switch, it's going to be engaged on the large go and end buttons here. So go would engage the PTO and end would disengage the PTO. If our front PTO was in automatic mode, likewise, but it's going to be on the small go and end buttons here. If both our um, three point hitch and our PTO are in automatic mode, they're still both controlled by just one button press here, but when we press go, the hitch will lower to a certain point, then engage the PTO, and then continue to lower to its working depth position. When we press the end button, it will lift the hitch to a certain position, then shut the PTO off, and then continue lifting to its maximum height. And lastly, we have our white color technology buttons on the armrest. The one at the top here which says go in end, that puts our Variotronic Teach In in standby mode. Teach In is a headland management tool where we can program a certain sequence of events in our Varial terminal and call them up at our headland simply by pressing one of the go and end buttons on our multifunction joystick. We'll do another video on it that shows it in more detail later. Below that to the right we have a dotted steering wheel. That puts our Varial Guide in standby mode. And then to activate Varial Guide is our button on the left. Other than that, underneath our armrest, we have a switch for our electric mirrors on the tractor. And on the side console here, maybe difficult to see, there's a button for our electronic battery disconnect. That wraps up all the controls on the armrest of the Fent tractor. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you've got any suggestions what you'd like to see on our next how-to video, please just leave us a note in the comments.